I certainly would like to talk about that. I can give you a brief biography. You know I am 82 years old, so I got a lot of life that I've lived, <laughs> but I'll try to condense it into okay. a small amount. <laughs> Do what you can. Yeah, a small amount. And it's that I was born and raised in a suburb of Chicago, an upscale suburb, a very nice uh, nice family. And certainly, it was a, I was a depression baby, supposedly, but we had no depression in our house. We were very well off, I felt, and we had uh, living servants, or one living servant in our house, a, a young lady who was a very wonderful person. But anyway, there was no power lifting in those days. We did have, as you may know, Olympic weightlifting, and that was it. Weightlifting with a capital W. Sure. But no powerlifting. But Bob Hoffman was the coach of the Olympic weightlifting team, and he his headquarters was in York, Pennsylvania, which may be familiar with some folks. He offered, as part of his business, material. He offered uh, devices he offered. He offered barbells, he offered dumbbells and all that, that you could buy by mail, or actually motor freight is the way they came because they were sure. so heavy. Sure. There was no place you could go in the city of Chicago or anywhere in a store to buy dumbbells or barbells or sure. like there's now, but there wasn't any of that. Nobody had any, they didn't know what they were. Sure. But Bob did, he had a magazine which we read, so I, that's where I got started. I bought his, his uh, special. All the barbells About what and dumbbells. age were you when you did that? Well, I wasn't too young. I was 27. Okay. And I was changing my lifestyle. I quit smoking. I thought I'd live a better lifestyle, try to get stronger. All of that worked. And even working with Bob's dumbbells and barbells and his program, he gave you a little booklet, you know, on how sure. to exercise. Even working with that, it worked for me. I got stronger. I got bigger. I just felt so much better. Everything it was a lifestyle change. Basically. It was a lifestyle change. So I wish I had continued ahead because I got different jobs and then I got traveling and business mm -hmm. and it just it just didn't keep any continuity and I moved, moved a couple times. So I got to fast forward to when I'm 60. Okay. Now most of the folks looking at this probably aren't 60 yet. Probably. They may <laughs> hope that they will be. And I hope that they hope. <laughs> you hear some people say, I never want to get old. Well, okay, that's easily solved. <laughs> we, can, we can solve that for you. You want to get old, but the way you get old is what is important. And by 60, I was still a pretty young man. I took up real weightlifting then and powerlifting with the body shop in Sheboygan. They were the only ones that had it, and they had the equipment, and sure. that. so you had to go with them. And they taught me some good stuff. And again, I developed. And at age 60, you can really develop fast. Mm -hmm. And I, boy, I really developed the biceps and all that stuff. But then again, I got, I got, you know, I got different jobs and roll here and go there and move and all that. Sure. And I lost what they did for me. And then I was pretty well settled in the late 90s. That's when I'm almost 70 years old but not quite. And a buddy of mine was doing power, well, he wasn't doing really powerlifting, but he was doing bench pressing. Sure. And he said he'd take me on as a, as a neighbor, as a, a, a fellow, as a, you know, as somebody, a, to train. somebody to train with. So I trained with him, and he brought me into a couple of competitions locally in Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. and, well, because when I'm old like that, by that time I was almost 70, but I wasn't 70. Then you're either, you're competing against people that are seventy or a little bit. Uh, there aren't any. Right. It turns out, so you win. So we, I got a trophy. I said, "Geez, I never got a trophy before in my life." So that motivated you to do more. Right? Well, yeah, wow. <laughs> and and John, John said, "Well, come on, let's go." Yeah, he got one too. And I said, "No, let's walk around the, the Y. It was at the YMCA. Why, let's walk around a while." Mm -hmm. no, that was the people. <laughs> you wanted to show <laughs> you. Know, I show my trophy. <laughs> Not the last time, by any means, that, that that happened. But that was probably the first time. Sure. Then, the next, well, I got into lifting sort of on my own, not always with John, and I wanted to do deadlifting, and I did that on my own. And I could get up to 250 pounds deadlift. 
Well, that's not very good. Sorry. That's not very good. I knew it wasn't very good, but I couldn't get any farther. So one night I saw a fellow by the name of Rich Hires. I don't know if you know him. I think that was his name. I knew he was a lifter, and I said, I, you got to show me deadlifting because I've signed up for a contest that's got deadlifting and I don't know how to do it. He said, in 20 minutes he showed me how to deadlift. And it really worked well because then I went out to the contest and that one was in Maryland. That's Maryland, USA. Now was this rich guy, was he at a YMCA or was he at a gym? Or? Oh, he, I met him at the gym. Okay. Yeah, and I, I had seen him lift, but I did, really didn't know. Well, anyway, he, told, he taught me pretty well. I got out to Maryland, Hampstead, Maryland, whoever heard of that, small town, in Maryland, no, no, no small towns, <laughs> it's a big town anyway, and they had a big, huge meet, but it was what we would call push-pull, okay. and no, no squats, and I performed there, I did my lifts, and got a, a nice ovation. Nobody in that whole place knew who I was. They never saw me before in their lives. They're all from Maryland or, sure. or New Jersey or someplace. And they were, and everybody telling me what a nice lift I made. Yeah, geez. <laughs> <laughs> and this crowd really, really roared when I made my uh, deadlift, you know. Well, it's 315 pounds. It's not all that made much, and but how it's something. Old were you? 70. Yeah. I was 70. I was 70. And boy, oh boy, that's what hooked me. The crowd. They say that the crowd doesn't matter. The crowd matters. They say when the Green Bay Packers, uh, folks up in Green Bay, cheer at Lambeau Field for it the Packers, that does make a difference. I, I believe that as well. Even though you think they're all jaded, you know, everybody proves to me all the time, <laughs> doesn't matter. It still makes a difference. It sure does. And, and I, that is, I was hooked. Then I, then I had to learn about squatting, and that's more difficult, and mm -hmm. didn't do very well, but kept at it. So you've, you've lifted with. Uh, Wisconsin powerlifting since you were 70 at least, right? Yes. So. Well, I think so. Were you in, you, no, you weren't in business right away, were we? No. You, uh, as soon as you were, I think I was. Because Joe at one time was with AAU, I think. Yes. And he put That's out some AAUs. Yeah. And I was in one of his AAU meets. Mm -hmm. And you were there too. Yes. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but it, I tried to follow Joe and do whatever he doing because he's a local guy and yeah. you want to support him. Sure, absolutely. And go into his meets. So how many uh, Wisconsin Parliament meets if you had to put put a number on it to have you done, do you think? Well, I would guess about 15 maybe. That sounds about right. Tell us about the trip you took to Denver. With oh the team. yeah, yeah, that was pretty. Well, as it turned out, my, my friend from childhood wanted to go to Denver and so I thought, well, we'll drive and then we'll be able to talk. Normally you don't get able to, uh, you don't, you can't talk to old buddies for uh, days on end, you know, you just can't because there's other things to do. But in this case, there's a whole trip to Denver we could talk, and that was pretty nice. So I went, I went out with him, went back with him. The Denver trip the uh, was wonderful, and the, the meat was wonderful. It was just great. Yeah, it was a Rich Peters meat. Oh, yeah, he does a good job. He no, did. he really does. I'm not just yeah. saying that. No, he no. really does a good job. He's Absolutely awesome with his, his trophies and the awards he gets oh, out. Yeah, yeah. If I remember right, uh, you had a hard time fitting your trophy in the car, right? True. <laughs> the taller you are. Oh, yeah. It was, well, he had a, what they call a Camry, a Toyota. And that's a fairly decent sized car, but a little small. Considered small. <laughs> Considered small. And it's one of those that I have a car like that, too, where you can push the, the rear seat down and use that as an opening to, the, to use the, the rear um, trunk all the way to the front seat. And that's what you had to do. There, <laughs> otherwise, there was no room for it. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have gotten it on. We had no who would have done it. <laughs> Could have used it as a good ornament, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, a fantastic trophy. <laughs>